Hi, I'm Claire Pelletro from ClarePels.com, and in this video, I'm going to give you an inside look at how I use the Facebook Power Editor in order to set up my own ad campaigns. If you're not familiar with the Power Editor, pause this video and just click the link that's right here on your screen at the bottom in order to take that quick tour and just figure out where everything is in the Power Editor. I promise you it's going to save you a lot of time. Otherwise, if you're all ready to go, let's jump into the campaign. So first you're going to always, always, always click download to Power Editor. Select the account that you wanna work with in case you have more than one Facebook ads account. And then you're gonna start by clicking on Create Campaign. You enter the name, leave it at uh, auction for buying type, and select your objective, which is going to be clicks to website or website conversion. 90% of my campaigns, or maybe more, I have my objective is website conversions. That means newsletter signups, opt-in to a webinar or a live event or a piece of opt-in content, or it can mean a purchase. Basically, anytime somebody takes an action on your website that's more than just you know, clicking on a blog post or something, that's a website conversion. So let me give this a name and hit create. Then you're going to jump over to ad sets and you start by creating your very first ad set. You're, they're always gonna ask you at every step of the way to identify which campaign you're, you want the ads or the ad sets to go in. So this is always gonna be the same here. And then give your ad set a name. What do you use different ad sets for? Basically, it's just to separate out the audiences of your ads. So let's say you want to target men and women, but separately, because you want to see what's the result. Do you get a higher click-through rate or cheaper conversions? Or maybe you want to test out different ages, you know, 25 to 35, 35 to 45. The combinations are really endless. You could do so many segmentations using ad sets, but I like to start with testing out two things, because testing is always a good idea. If you're running ads, but you're not comparing the results of two or more ad sets, you're really losing a huge opportunity. One of the great things about ad sets is that you can set your budget. So if I know that you know most of my clients or customers are women, I'm gonna spend more money here, right? So maybe $50 a day. But if I do wanna test out, okay, well, how do men respond to this specific campaign? I might just leave the budget at 15 or 20 and, and just only spend a little bit of money in order to get some interesting data or results. Then you can set the dates for each ad set. It can either be starting today and running continuously, or you can set, you can set an end date as well. So once you've got at least one ad set set up, you head over here to ads. This is, this is where most of the action happens. You've got to create your ad, identify the audience, and then set pricing. But it, it's actually really simple. So again, they're going to ask you which campaign, which ad set, and name your ad. So I like to identify who my target audience is in the name of the ad. It just helps me later on um, see what's working quickly without having to dig into each ad. So women add one. And now I'm here in the creative tag, uh, in the creative tab automatically. Website conversions we've already set. I need to choose which Facebook page or place this ad is related to. And then if you've got a post on your Facebook page that you just want to turn into an ad, you're going to find it here. If not, and in most of my cases, I don't turn page posts that are already published into ads because usually they're just not created to be an ad. You're not thinking about that when you're crafting your Facebook post. So you would hit create new unpublished post. Typically, I create photo ads, although link ads are also a possibility. I talk more about that on the blog, so head on over there if you want to get the difference between this link ad and photo ad. But here I choose my image. I'm just going to use the same one as an example. But for the post text, or what I call the ad copy, I like to have a couple versions 
already set up in a Google Doc, so I can just head over here, copy, paste. This, as you can see, it's already got my link right in there. And, you know, some copy giving people a call to action so they know what are they going to get when they click on this ad. I hit create post. And over here on the right, you get a preview of what your ad is going to look like. You can skip optional URL tags, but do not skip conversion tracking pixels because if you are running ads without tracking conversions, which means uh, Facebook tells you how many conversions or newsletter opt-ins or purchases your ads are generating, you're wasting a ton of money. I've got an explanation over on clairepels.com about how to set up your conversion tracking. It takes about 10 minutes and it will actually work for you in several of your campaigns because lots of times your conversions are the same for your website regardless of, of what, you're, what you're promoting. So once you've got that set up, you're going to come over here, select pixels and choose which conversion you've just set up. For placement, unless I'm trying to get people to buy, to open up their wallets and purchase something from me, I always do newsfeed, desktop, and mobile. If I am trying to get people to open their wallets, then I'm going to do newsfeed, desktop. You can play around with all of these things, but this is what has just worked for me, so I almost always keep this. And I leave mobile devices as is, choosing all mobile devices. Then you're going to come over here to audience. Uh, I'm not going to go into detail here about selecting the best target audience. Again, if you head over to clairepels.com, you can read all about what target audience is right for your business, for your ad, and how to do that strategically so that you're not wasting money. But for now, I'm just going to give you a very quick sample. I'm going to do maybe women from 20 to 30. Leave languages blank. I'm going to put Marie Forleo in here because her audience is full of small business owners and, you know, that's my target audience as well. And I'm going to leave broad categories and connection. So here it tells you approximately how many people your ads might reach. I say that the absolute maximum that this should show should be 200,000. If it's more than that, then you need to segment down maybe by country or age or interest because more than that and your, your target audience is just too broad. And when your audience is broad, that means you're gonna waste money on clicks. So the last step is optimization and pricing. Take my word for it, go for optimized CPM. Uh, this means that Facebook is going to show your ad to people who are more likely to take the action that you've specified with that conversion tracking. So it's going to show your ad, an ad like this, which I'm trying to get people to opt in to give me their email address and download this PDF. It's going to show the ad to people who are more likely to take that action based on the, the activity that Facebook is tracking of their users. So I choose use default bids and I have to select my pixel again. This is the same step that we did over in creative. I'm not sure why you have to do it twice, but it's simple. So then you can see I don't have this little red exclamation point here anymore. If you've got any errors in your ads, it's going to show up here. And right next to editing, it's going to have an explanation of what the problem is. But this one is ready to go. So I'm going to hit upload changes. And then my ad is ready to go. It's been sent for review. And as soon as it gets approved, I'm going to receive a notification from Facebook that my ad has been approved. If it hasn't been, it's because, usually it's because there is too much text on your ad. They've got a 20% rule and they're really strict about it. So keep that in mind when you're creating ad images. So that's pretty much everything you need to know in order to set up your first ad campaigns within the Power Editor. As you can see, the Power Editor is a great tool, but it's also a pain to learn. It's not easy. It takes time. 
So if you have any questions at all, I want you to leave them here in the comments on YouTube or head over to clairepels.com and jump into the discussion over on the blog. Again, there are no stupid questions when it comes to the power editor. It's taken me a long time to get to the point where I'm able to set up ads and manage campaigns relatively quickly. So please let me know what your questions are and I'll do my absolute best to answer them.